what there needs to be is toughness, mental and physical toughness. We need to go out there and we need to have fun. I will never be talking about how you have fun. <coughs> right? But have fun by going out there from the first snap to the last snap. If we are getting after men, we need to take care of business. <laughs> Johnson, a deep drop on a play fake, throws a deep left side for Nelson, waits, makes the catch of the eight, hit, spins off at the five, dives, and he's in with a Bison touchdown. What a great pass, catch, and run, and the Bison lead it 34 to nothing.
fight and you may die. Run, and you'll love at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! And play our style of football. And we 
don't want it any other way. College football is a season that begins in the heart of summer and ends in the grip of winter. But it had been a long time since the Bison football team had warmed the hearts of North Dakotans with a December win. Everyone in Division II, though, began August work knowing the Bison would be heard from again when the winter winds began to blow. Twenty full-time starters were back. They were battle-tested and determined. Eighty-eight others stood at their side. Together they decided it was time for Bison football to again take its place among the nation's best. Everybody was aware of this team's talent and experience, but the nation was about to learn that there was also character in this herd of Bison. Game number one saw the highly touted Havilinas of Texas A&M Kingsville invade the Fargo Dome. Number three hosting number 10, as a way of getting your attention. And if the Bison didn't have the visitors full focus already, one offensive play would fix all that. 25, 30, to the 20, to the 10, 5, touchdown, Lamar Gordon, my, oh my! 
Senior quarterback Ryan Johnson used his feet and his arm to stake NDSU to a three touchdown lead. First an eight yard scramble to make it 14-0. Ryan Johnson hurtled over the last defender, cornerback J.R. Turner. Then a short pass with a long result. Top to left flat by Gordon. Peaks one man, cuts to his right at the 40, to the 50, to the Gainesville 40, right sideline 40. He is gone. 10, 5, another touchdown, Lamar Gordon. Lamar Gordon would find the end zone three times in the first half. But the fancy footwork wasn't just reserved for the running backs. Shane Detman played Houdini with the Kingsville defenders, scoring on a 17-yard scamper. And then Johnny Cox's receivers found the end zone in a more traditional manner. Bart at the Havelina 47. Johnson, a deep drop on a play fake. Throws a deep left side for Nelson. Waits, makes the catch of the eight. Hit, spins off for the five, dives, and he's in with a Bison touchdown. What a great pass, catch, and run. And the Bison lead at 34 to nothing. By halftime, the lead was 42, and the route was officially on. Leaving no stone unturned, Casey Bradley's defense was also up to the scoring task. Matt Swanson's fumble return made it 49 0, and win number one was in the bag. The beating was convincing and thorough. The Havelinas were held to just 55 first half yards, and they would never really recover from this frightening trip to Fargo. Game number two pitted the Bison against Cross River rival Minnesota State Moorhead. Those who thought last year's 70 point performance was impressive hadn't seen anything yet. Bison fans had heard about the junior college transfer with blazing speed and shifty moves, but tonight they'd see just what Richard Lewis could do. Just a minute and a half in, he sprung a 63 yard punt return for a seven nothing score. Then after another three and out, Lewis went back to return punt number two. Lewis had given the Bison a 14-0 lead and had given every future opponent a new problem to solve. When the Bison return men weren't scorching the Dragon punt team, the frontliners were wreaking havoc. Mike Shepard's first college score gave the Bison a 28-0 lead and the first quarter was far from over. Lamar Gordon's 38-yard sprint made the score 35-0, and while the offense and special teams had already flexed their muscle, the defense was getting ready to punctuate the first quarter statement. When the first quarter clock struck zero, NDSU had run just eight offensive plays, but had already scored 42 points. Sophomore Greg Gorder took the offensive reins and wasted no time putting his stamp on this Saturday night special. A 46-yard scoring strike to Mark Bratton was followed by a 68-yard to Sean Perkins highlight, and the record book was in dire need of editing. NDSU's 80 points set a modern-day scoring record, but more importantly, Bob Babich's team was primed and ready for the conference season. Outstanding job, man. We talked about maturity all week, and we came out, and I'll tell you what, the defense was flying around. Special teams, how about those special teams? Yeah! A warm fall day greeted the Bison as they stormed Selkie Field on the campus of St. Cloud State. And it took just three plays for the Bison to announce their arrival to the North Central Conference. Lamar Gordon's two-yard run was followed by an 11-play, 93-yard drive capped off by an 11-yard Ryan Johnson toss to Eric Nelson. Johnson's pass is complete to number 49. 
NDSU's pattern of first quarter dominance would hold true in the MCC. Johnson's second hookup with Eric Nelson covered 46 yards. And Aaron Peterson PAT made it 23 0 after one. The Bison defense, meanwhile, was allowing the Huskies little opportunity or yardage. Leif Murphy nailed opposing offenders for loss three times, and Ryan Evenson tallied six tackles for Casey Bradley's defense. A pair of Deshaun Perkins touchdowns served notice that the Bison were not just a one-back machine. Perkins and company racked up 350 rushing yards, 23 first downs, and 557 total yards. A 37-7 win gave NDSU a perfect start to the conference campaign and a 3-0 record heading into game number four, a home opener against always feisty South Dakota. What is Bison football? That is being physical. This is going to be a physical game, but this, that's what it's all about. This is what we're about. I am so pumped about this game because we're going to find out what we're all about when it comes to being physical. If we talk to talk and walk to walk, and there's no doubt in our mind that we will get it done. And in the end, let's have fun. Let's go, guys. <laughs> The Bison defense had been so impressive in its first three games that Casey Bradley's first teamers had outscored the other guy's offense 14 to nothing. That string of zeros would come to an end early in the first quarter, but it only served to poke a stick in the hornet's nest. The Bison defense held the Coyotes to 82 yards the rest of the half. But the big story on this night came from Glenn Caruso's prize pupil. Lamar Gordon's 68-yard touchdown run was just the tip of the iceberg. Bruce Somm's Rams hadn't just come to play, they'd come to dominate. Gordon's one-yard run gave the Bison a 17-7 lead after one quarter. Then it was time for the passing attack to kick in. Gordon dots the eye, fake handoff, and Johnson on a pump fake throws the ball deep up the right sideline for Detman goes high in the air, makes the catch at the 11 yard line. Ryan Johnson went to his favorite target for a six yard score, pushing the lead to 24 7. Zone caught for a Bison touchdown. Eric Nelson caught the ball over Russell Purwell. My, oh my. A 14-point halftime lead was quickly extended as Lamar Gordon gave the Fargo Dome faithful an unexpected treat. Tonight, they would see history. A 75-yard masterpiece made it 31-13, and by the end of the third quarter, Gordon had trampled the 200-yard mark for the first time, but he wasn't done. Quarter number four produced touchdown number four, and Jake Morris's single-game rushing record of 251 yards was in serious jeopardy. A 23-yard burst pushed the Bison into Cayo territory and thrust Gordon to the top of the single-game rushing list. He would finish with 260 rushing yards and four touchdowns, but the Bison had more heroics to offer. Richard Lewis's 82-yard fourth-quarter punt return made the score 45-13 and sent the fans home happy. But not to be lost was Aaron Peterson's 26th career field goal, also a new record. And he set it in style, a 52-yarder. It all added up to NDSU's 12th straight home win and a 4-0 season mark. There was plenty to celebrate, but little time for festivities, because the UND Fighting Sioux were next on the schedule. And they had something in their hands the Bison desperately wanted. Two story programs, two excellent teams, thousands of crazy fans, and one The biggest crowd ever to watch a North Dakota game turned out as the month of September came to a close. It was the battle for the Nickel Trophy, a tussle the Bison hadn't taken since 1997. Defense was the name of this game, and the Bison were ready to show off. Right up by Jay Hatley for Duke Call it second down four on the 47 yard line. Give to Gordon again, this time with a hole. One man to beat and a great open field tackle on the corner. That's been a long count. 
Big to give. Now a full leg. He's got a tight end open. It's Craig Tang on the near side. Aaron Peterson added some offense, and his second quarter boot sent the teams to the locker room, tied at three. And it is good. Ryan Johnson, a nice job getting this stone territory. It'll be first again for the Bison. The third quarter scoring heated up in grand fashion. Junior wideout Shane Detman turned an out pattern and a missed tackle into six points. And the hometown crowd finally got its chance to go crazy. Depth 32 yards. Cross him again to Perker Evans, trying to get outside, but he is stuffed. Mike Rohn up in the cornerback spot, and Steve Knorr is in the eye behind him. Back and looking, gets good protection. Now throws, looking deep for Eric Nelson. He's got it! A great diving catch by Eric Nelson at the 19 yard line. Then Aaron Peterson was on the money from 35 and 43 yards, and at the end of three, the Bison were in charge of a 10-point game. We decide this game, and right now they are. Little pooch kick, takes a funny bounce, stays in bounce, it's a live ball, and it's recovered by NDSU! Matt Swanson grabs it at the 30-yard line! The kick is on the way, and it is good! Aaron Peterson is three of three. The Sioux would make things interesting, but UND's last chance turned into NDSU's last stand. The rush is on. Hussman steps up. Now buys more time. Nobody Looking open. for a receiver. There's nobody there. And he throws it away. The Bison have held. And there it is. 75 pounds, never felt so light. The most sought after five cent piece in history was again back in Bison hands. UND's unlucky night had become NDSU's 13th straight home win. 16-13 was the final, and NDSU had now posted five straight wins to start the year. Uh, I've never been so proud of so many players. Uh, tons of young guys are stepping up and just playing outstanding for us. I approach it as in the way that, you know, we're a team and um, we're going to get it done together. I didn't really approach it as, you know, hey, i got to get revenge on this guy, whatever. It was more... Um, we're going to do this as a team together. Win number six would not come easy against the Augustana Vikings. The Bison got a cool reception on a cold afternoon at Howard Wood Stadium. The Vikings built a 10-0 lead before Lamar Gordon countered with a nine-yard scamper. An Aaron Peterson 52-yarder not in the game at 10 as the team's plotted strategy for the final 30 minutes. The Vikings started the second half just like they started the first by building a 10-point lead. For the first time all year, NDSU was on the ropes. Down but not out, senior quarterback Ryan Johnson bounced off a would-be tackler and cut across the field for a 25-yard scoring run. And after three, it was just a three-point deficit. With less than eight minutes to play, the lead was still three, and NDSU was on its two. Bob Babbage called on a feisty offensive line and a fight to the finish running back. Four Lamar Gordon runs had the Bison near midfield. The fifth would take care of the other half of the field. A 51-yard sprint made the score 24 to 20, and Aaron Peterson's point after was big for the team and himself. His 84th straight PAT set a Division II record. There was no time to celebrate. The high-octane Viking offense still had five minutes to operate. The Vikings drove into NDSU territory before Casey Bradley's defense stiffened. 
It was fourth and three, and the Vikings were down to their last gasp. Yes, the Bison had found a way to win. 24-20 was the final. NDSU was now 6-0, 4-0 in conference play. Up next, a homecoming battle against South Dakota State. We need to know that we need to play with passion. We need to play with enthusiasm every time we come out. 14,353 fans were treated to some early offense against South Dakota State as Lamar Gordon posted a 13-yard touchdown for a 7-0 lead. Meanwhile, the defense was keeping the Jackrabbit expectations modest. SDSU was only able to gain 29 first quarter yards compared to NDSU's 110. It was 7-0 at halftime, and the only Jackrabbit scoring of the night came on a third-quarter field goal. A 7-3 lead was quickly widened as Gordon went over from three yards out. It capped a 10-play, 81-yard drive. Really, it put an end to any ideas the visitors might have had. Gordon's third touchdown run of the night made it 21-3, and for the second time this year, the junior sensation topped the 200-yard mark with 203 yards. All total, the Bison ran for 323 yards, and the 7-0 Bison took a 5-0 conference mark off the field. But waiting for them was another team boasting the same record, the Mavericks of Nebraska-Omaha. The battle featured two of the nation's best defenses, and both lived up to the billing. There would be no touchdowns and just a handful of offensive yards today. NDSU scored first as Aaron Peterson banged home a 39-yarder. That 3-0 lead would stand through the half as the Bison limited the Mavericks to 66 rushing yards on 23 carries. And the passing game wasn't much better. One completion in three tries for a total of three yards. The Maverick defense, however, was done giving up points, and great field position led to a pair of Nebraska-Omaha field goals. The Bison had their fourth quarter offensive chances, but a combination of miscues and good Maverick defense shut the door. It was not meant to be on this day, and NDSU fell for the first time in a 6-3 decision. But not to be forgotten was a great effort by the Bison defense holding the nation's number eight team to just 159 yards. It was back to the drawing board and back to the road, where NDSU would face Minnesota State Mankato. MSU Mankato was just two and six on the season, but the Bison knew this was a team that would test them, and the hometown 22 came to play, posting a seven nothing lead. But then, like so many times before, the offensive line stepped forward and Lamar Gordon stepped through. The 48-yard burst was one of three first-half scores for the Milwaukee Junior, and the Bison had a seven-point halftime lead.
Deshaun Perkins' third quarter plunge made it a 14-point game, but the Mavericks responded by cutting the lead to six with just two minutes to play. Andy Rondo's defensive backs would be called on to preserve the victory. The Mavericks were threatening with the ball on the Bison 35 when Mike Rohn grabbed a deflected pass and sealed NDSU's eighth win of the year. A 65-yard score closed out the scoring, kept NDSU just a game off the pace in the NCC. Next up, back to the friendly confines of the Fargo Dome for a matchup with Northern Colorado. The Bears were wounded but proud, and everyone knew Kay Dalton's team wouldn't roll over for anyone, with hopes of a 500 season still intact. But the 10,000 Harvest Bowl fans knew something else, that tonight might be the night for Lamar Gordon to set one of Division II's most regarded records, the all-time career rushing leader in North Dakota State history. And just nine minutes in, Gordon got the festivities started. His 43-yard touchdown run gave the Bison a 7-0 lead, but the Bears fired back with two long scoring passes, grabbing a 14-7 lead. Then the man of the night struck again, bolting through the Bears' defense to the tune of 71 yards. NDSU took the lead for good two plays later as a Wes Daniels fumble ended up in the end zone. Casey Bradley's defense had to settle for the two. But on the next offensive play, NDSU would stretch that lead. Converted defensive back Richard Lewis had been learning the receiver position, but hadn't yet broken a big one. Tonight would be the night. Ryan Johnson was on the money on a 52-yard timing pattern, and Lewis took it home for a 23-14 halftime lead. Craig Tangan touchdown reception and a Deshaun Perkins one-yard run closed out the scoring as NDSU picked up its 15th straight home win and its ninth victory of the season. But there was more to celebrate tonight as NDSU crowned a new career rushing leader. Lamar Gordon's 3,779 yards set a new standard that Bison backs will be chasing for a long time. NDSU's final regular season test was more like a pop quiz. Lowly Morningside had decided earlier in the season to drop out of Division II football, and the Mustangs players and coaches had little to play for but pride. Meanwhile, NDSU was jockeying for a playoff position. Lamar Gordon rode the backs of Bruce Somm's linemen all the way to the end zone. An eight-play, 80-yard drive was finished by a four-yard score, and the Bison were off and running. Many a Bison would share in the glory of this night. Mike Rome found the end zone for the second time in three weeks with an 11-yard fumble return. Then in the second, the passing offense connected as Ryan Johnson hit Eric Nelson from 42 yards.
Jeremy Lure's number was called twice inside the five, and his second attempt was fruitful with a two-yard bull rush. And Russ Yeager put the finishing touches on a 55-14 win with a 27-yard field goal right down the middle. Yes, the Bison were clicking on all cylinders, and records continued to fall. Lamar Gordon became NDSU's single-season rushing leader, and Richard Lewis set a single-season punt return record as well. Casey Bradley's defense was also in top shape, and the 10-1 Bison would soon learn their first playoff destination, Maryville, Missouri, home of the two-time defending national champions, the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats. We did what we set out to do. We wanted to win the game, we wanted to win it convincingly, we wanted to get some younger guys in there, and we wanted to head into the playoffs, and we're headed there, baby. <laughs> Northwest Missouri State had won 24 straight games. They were 34-1 and in their last 35. But the Bison were playing as the underdog for the first time all season. And they were ready to show the world that the Road Warriors meant business. In the final eight along with NDSU's Lamar Gordon. A low punt, squips through a couple of Bearcats plays, and now it's hit by Miles. The ball is loose, and there's a big pile. The Bison say they have it, and the officials agree. On their second possession, Aaron Peterson booted a 47-yarder with plenty of room to spare. On their next possession, Bob Babich pulled a fast one on the home team. Lamar Gordon carried out the play fake and sprinted past the Bearcat defense. 39 yards later, he was in the end zone and the hometown fans were in a state of shock. Their team was down 10-0 early. The Bearcats would come back with 10 second quarter points, and at halftime it was tied at 10. Chase from behind, the ball is loose, Tom Kress forces a fumble. They're still scrambling for it. They'll say Northwest is out. Northwest Missouri State went three and out on its first drive of the second half, and that would be a sign of things to come. Meanwhile, the offense was just starting to hit its stride. The Bison embarked on a nine-play, 73-yard drive, ending in a Ryan Johnson 13-yarder to Jared Peck. Now Johnson, fake give, rolls right, got some time, throwing, looking for Jared Peck. He's got it! Touchdown, North Dakota State! Again, the Bison had pulled ahead. On the very next drive, Lamar Gordon went four yards to make it 24-10, and the home team started to shake its head. The Bison defense was as good as advertised. The Bearcats ran at 31 times for a total of 81 yards. And the Bison secondary made sure the high-powered Bearcat passing offense didn't get any crazy ideas either. One of NDSU's unsung offensive heroes put the finishing touches on the win. First, Deshaun Perkins raced 60 yards to the Bearcat He eight. breaks into the clear, one man to beat. Gets a great block from Shane Devin, down the sidelines oh. and out of bounds. Then around right end for the touchdown. The Bison had a 21 point lead and went on to win it 31 to 17. The Giant had been slain and once again the Bison were making waves on a national scene. Up next, a rematch with the only team to beat the Bison, Nebraska-Omaha. Unexplainable, really. Um, I know a lot of us seniors were part of that uh, team that came down here in 97 and got beat, and uh, that left a hole in our, uh, you know, our heart or your stomach or whatever. And, and uh, we took that and <coughs> we built on that, and. Uh, <laughs> It was an unbelievable effort by the whole team. You know, offense came out in the second half and really shoved it down their throats, I think. And, uh, you know, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to, and they said in the paper, you know, they wanted to play a smash mouth game. Well, I think we gave it to them. 
Anxious to avenge the season's only loss, NDSU met up with Nebraska-Omaha for what figured to be another knockdown, dragout defensive war. It was a war and there was defense, but nothing else followed the script. The Mavericks stunned everyone, including themselves, turning one great drive and one great special teams play into 14 quick points. The hometown crowd figured the route was on. To add injury to insult, starting quarterback Ryan Johnson had left the game with a knee injury. But Greg Gorder's third down pass to Jared Peck gave NDSU new life and a positive development. It lit a fire in the Bison, and as the drive got longer, the Bison got stronger. Lamar Gordon polished it off with a 22-yard dart to the end zone, and the Bison were on the board, and the Mavericks were about to fall apart. NDSU forced and recovered two first half fumbles. The first pounced on by Andrew LeClaire, the second by Bill Ehrenberg. The Bison offense used the jump start to post a Craig Tang in five yard TD catch and a Deshaun Perkins four yard scoring run. By the end of the second quarter, the wind had been taken out of the UNO sales. NDSU had run off 26 unanswered points, and they weren't done yet. More Maverick offense, more fumbles. The Bison would recover four in all. By the time Eric Nelson ran unchecked into the end zone, NDSU was up 36 to 14. Lamar Gordon's one-yard TD run completed an amazing turnaround, 43 unanswered points, and the number four team in the country had been manhandled by number five. But it was a costly.